you're about to get a sneak preview of the world's best truck. Built in the world's biggest truck factory. Same Mercedes-Benz, and most people think luxury sedan. Precision engineered, plush design, and pricey. A high-end ride for the upper class. Yet as famous as they are, none of these vehicles dominates its particular market. Like a Mercedes product you may never have heard of. This semi-tractor trailer truck. It's the best-selling semi in Europe. The Mercedes Actros. In fact, for this regal German manufacturer, the Actros is a crown jewel. Three times it was voted International Truck of the Year, a record no other truck can match. Aficionados even voted it Truck of the Decade. But Mercedes-Benz never rests on its laurels. For the first time in 16 years, the Actros is getting a complete overhaul. That means one of motor manufacturing's oldest companies faces the challenge of gearing up for the future. The future will arrive at a German city more than 700 years old. On the outskirts of Wörth, beside the Rhine River, sprawls the Daimler Mega Factory, home to Mercedes trucks. You'd think they were developing a super weapon instead of a truck. Behind these walls, guarded like a state secret, waits the new model. So sophisticated, it took more than eight years and over one billion euros to develop. To keep the new model under wraps, no outsiders are allowed to see it. Until now. Seeing the new model is just the icing on the cake. Photographing the assembly of the new Actros has also been verboten. But now National Geographic cameras will be allowed inside for an exclusive shoot. Filming the building of this 21st century workhorse. In this section of the assembly plant, the new Actros will come together. Here, MB could stand for mighty big. It's the largest truck plant in the world. A true mega factory. Almost three million square meters. Big enough to hold 15 Taj Mahals, gardens and all, with room to spare. The assembly hall itself holds three production lines, each stretching a full kilometer long. It's so big, you need a vehicle to get around. Assembling the new top secret model, is an army of workers, all sworn to secrecy. As you'd expect, this mega factory is mega busy. Over the course of a year, some 80,000 trucks roll down these lines. With two shifts, they can turn out up to 400 vehicles per day. 
about 25 trucks per hour, or one truck every few minutes. If that sounds impressive, consider this. None of the trucks are mass-produced. Every single Actros is tailored to the customer's demands. Think about it. 80,000 trucks a year, and no two alike. As a result of such mind-boggling customization, this plant becomes the ultimate test of what Germans pride themselves on. Organization and efficiency. The keys to building a superior complex product. By now, you're probably wondering, if the Actros is such a superior product, why redesign it? Two reasons. First, we have a product that's been on the market for 16 years and therefore stands at the end of its life cycle. The other reason, tighter emission standards for Europe. Trucks no longer sell just on pulling power. Customers want mean, lean and green. That requires such immense changes. We decided to develop a completely new generation vehicle. You'll probably never drive one of these. But your lifestyle is riding on it. Trucks deliver the food you eat, the clothes you wear, and the materials that build your home. Without trucks, your world would screech to a halt. For the guys behind the wheel, this truck is the way to go. You're king of the road and the highway in a great truck. Now, we'll follow the assembly of one entire truck. From start to finish, going where no outsider has yet been allowed to view what no camera has ever seen as the new Actros comes together piece by piece. Like any semi, the Actros has two main body parts. The chassis, or base, and the cab. In this part of the plant, the chassis will come together, following a straight route down the assembly line. The cab will take a roundabout journey from assembly to paint shop to interior fittings to the spot where the cab and chassis are joined together. By journey's end, some 4,000 parts will come together to make a single truck. The parts themselves across this plant come from roughly 1,000 suppliers. The further each part travels, the greater its cost. A threat to efficiency from the start. So here's one way they boost efficiency. Placing key suppliers right on site. Half a dozen companies manufacture parts right outside these walls and deliver them straight to the production line. And maybe that's a unique competence that we offer at this location. To gather all lines, all different vehicles, 4,000 single parts. And then to organize all these so exactly that the result is a complete and functional truck. But don't think the plant manager never loses sleep. About half of all parts deliberately arrive in what they call just-in-sequence. Or put another way, in the nick of time. It's enough to make your head explode. But for Mercedes, it's a challenge to be met. After all, these are the people who invented the truck more than a century ago, back in 1896. But back then, the brand known as Mercedes-Benz was yet to be born. In 1885, a decade before the first truck, Carl Benz built one of the first petrol engine automobiles. Meanwhile, another German inventor was pioneering motor transport, Gottlieb Daimler. 
Mercedes wasn't yet a car. It was the name of the daughter of an Austrian financer who helped bankroll Daimler around the turn of the century. The Daimler company soon adopted the name Mercedes for its product. Then came the war. World War I. When the fighting broke out, German prosperity depended on global trade. Four years of war undermined the economy and defeat left it in shambles. Within five years, inflation had so ravaged Germany, it took 4.2 trillion Reichsmarks to equal one American dollar. Among the companies threatened with ruin were, of course, motor vehicle makers. To survive, Daimler and Benz merged to become Mercedes-Benz. The rest is history. And this is the future. A 12-year veteran of Mercedes-Benz, Yarish Perzu, now runs the Wirt Mega Factory. He's only in his 40s. The same age as Carl Benz when he invented his automobile. The son of Turkish immigrants, charged with upholding a brand name synonymous with Germany. And charged with launching the new Actros. Here's where the journey begins for the foundation of our truck. The chassis. The backbone that will support the axles, wheels, engine and cab. This stage of assembly poses its own challenge. How to efficiently assemble a complex product using human labor. Once again, the answer is organization and efficiency. The process begins with the chassis side members. These side members arrive in pairs, already drilled with pilot holes. These holes are positioned according to each specific truck's requirement, providing guides for the dozens of bolts and fittings that will hold this frame together. Basically, it's a mammoth version of insert tab A in slot B, with lots of chances for slip-ups. To be sure the right parts are added to the right frame, the teams use 21st century techniques. Laser technology. The workmen can see on this display which inlays have to be attached to the chassis beam. We show the worker which part he has to assemble to which position of the truck. We show him the item numbers of the parts and tell him the standard parts he has to use. Laser instructions are a new twist on the old assembly line, but the Actros takes the innovation one step further. We can write information directly on the frames with automated chassis laser labels. For instance, the length of the screw, the torque angle gauge, the position of the screw. So the worker gets all necessary information for the chassis assembly. The laser process is quite new technology. We apply this only with the new product, the new Actros. With the instructions complete, it's a quick elevator ride to the next floor. The chassis assembly lines. The total length of the lines is 600 meters and it takes six and a half hours to have the side members passed from the setup to the finish. First, cross beams are attached. These bars hold the chassis together. Then hardware to support the truck's components. Like the cross members themselves, teams work in parallel. Each piece is secured with industrial-sized bolts before being moved on to the next stage. And both the men and the parts are constantly moving. The humming rhythm of efficiency. 
Next, installing lines for the brakes and the core wiring. Another test of man versus machine. This job is very difficult because a lot of tubes and wires are assembled in a very small space. With the backbone of the chassis assembled, the limbs are added. These are the components that make the Actros roll. The axles. These central shafts hold the wheels. A car usually has two axles, one controlling the front wheels, another controlling the rear. The Actros can be made with up to four. The cab sits over the front axle, while the rear axles determine the maximum load. And they're designed to shoulder a Herculean burden. A four-axle Actros can handle a 30-ton load without breaking a sweat. They work so fast, it makes your head spin. One team can install axles, springs and drive shaft in eight minutes flat. More proof of the plant's efficiency. And there you have it, a complete chassis. Now it moves on to its next stop. Here we are in the chassis turning area. The frames are flipped in the painting because it is much easier and more ergonomic to assemble the axles and the sprints while they are flipped than doing it from the bottom. With the chassis complete, it no longer needs to be upside down. So here's how they somersault all that steel. Piece of cake. At the same time humans are assembling the chassis, other workers start to put together the cab. Body panels arrive preformed, but someone has to put them together. A job ideal for drones. With some 350 robots, the vert plant can easily be confused for the set of a sci-fi movie. This looks like mindless work for mindless workers, but don't be fooled. The cab we're following, like all the others, is custom assembled. That's the beauty of robots, a flawless memory. Each production cell in the plant can build any style of cab in any sequence, because they all know who they're working for. The driver. The process of delivering the truck to the customer basically starts by finding out his needs and requests. How does he want to use it? Will he drive it for a long time? Does he need a big cabin? If he does need a big cabin, he's in luck. The Actros boasts one of the biggest cabs on the road. From the time the driver places the order, until assembly begins, the plant has just six weeks to order all the parts, all prefabricated, like the cab panels, to streamline production. Assembling the entire truck itself takes just six days. That's less than a week to assemble 4,000 parts. You'd be lucky to finish a jigsaw puzzle that fast. But delivery could be upset by a single missing part. With so many parts per truck, keeping such a tight schedule requires logistical wizardry. And with a brand new model like the Actros, the logistical challenge on the assembly lines doubles. In the truck business, a startup typically takes two years until all lines are adjusted. 
In the meantime, they manufacture both models at the same time, on the same lines. The number of parts instantly doubles, and all that has to be organized in the plant and in the logistics. So the complexity in our plant will increase. That is an understatement. To put it in numbers, with 4,000 parts per truck and two models of trucks, that's 8,000 ways for something to go wrong. If that isn't hard enough, the challenge gets even trickier. The Actros accounts for only two-thirds of the plant's production. This mega factory also has two other models in production, also assembled on the same lines at the same time as the Actros. Add up all the configurations among just four models on this line, and you get about 500 cab designs, and more than 2,400 custom variants. And between these models, there are also differences in the wiring, where we have up to a thousand different types. It's a formula for a logistics nightmare. No wonder Mercedes competitors assemble their vehicles in two, three, or even four plants. Mercedes itself used to assemble its trucks at two plants nearby. But 50 years ago, they bought the site that became the Verd plant. Yet this mega factory started out with modest ambitions. The site itself covered about half its present area. The first workforce numbered fewer than 100 employees. The factory was envisioned as just an engine plant. A few years later, the company decided to concentrate all truck production under one roof. At first, mingling the assembly of different models on the same lines was viewed as a drawback. It turned out to be a blessing. The benefit, economies of scale from volume production. The challenge is, well, you can count them. Complexity can be negative if it ends in chaos. If you master it, then it can be very productive. Robots are key to productivity. They work so quickly and so reliably, they can assemble an entire cab in just nine hours. Panels, rivets, glue, all applied with perfect precision. But even the most sophisticated robot needs a human to check its work. So as our cab winds its way through the factory, it makes a detour to the cab testing area. It's one of eight cabs pulled off the assembly line every single day to ensure the robots are accurately programmed. And to verify accuracy, they take more than 400 measurements around the entire cab. Okay. Thomas Nett is one of the engineers who checks the robots. For instance, are the robots attaching the bolts and screws in exactly the right spot? With these measuring devices, we verify the position of these attachment points. These measuring devices are essential so we can, with five points, determine the center of the drill holes. The accuracy we demand from our measuring points is in the area of plus or minus 1 to 1.5 millimetres, which means everything outside this tolerance will be observed and analysed and adjusted as needed. After passing its test with flying colours, our cab moves back to the assembly line. Even before its wheels are attached, 
our cab is logging mileage. In all, it will travel about five kilometers throughout the factory. driver. Each component arrives via a driverless transportation system, a process unique in automotive construction anywhere in the world. And one more way the factory streamlines production for maximum efficiency. Next stop for our Actros cab, the paint shop. First, the cab takes a bath in a 300,000 litre tank. Then, your choice of paint job. From a palette of nearly 300 custom colours, including basic white. Thanks to automation, the entire process of applying multiple layers is done in about 19 hours, including drying time. Strong brands need high standards. And at Mercedes, the standards are sky high. So, as with other stages of work, they check the paint job. First, the colour shade will be analysed by a machine and compared to the standard specifications. Then comes a review of the robot's work. And you know what they think of robots. Trust but very fine. Yeah, it's Like his colleagues downstairs, Hans Weiss performs random tests. Man verifying the work of machine. Going by these checklists, I approve the cab, step by step. Be grateful he's not about to check your work, because Herr Weiss is a perfectionist. Okay. I check the paint. It's even all over. The texture, if it's flawless. If the cab or the door has any runs. If there's any dirt. If there are no gaps that stick out. Yeah. It doesn't look good. If there's a flaw showing, then I'll mark it. Now we get to the back. Here, in the pleat, there can't be any runs or dirt. It has to be alloyed perfectly, so the edge is nice and even. The particles are so fine, you might not see them with your eye or camera. I've been doing this job since 1995. The experience, the skill, the time you get them. Here again, there's dirt. There are lots of very fine black dots. That means the paint isn't continuous, and that's not acceptable. The paint job has to be faultless and cover everything evenly, without interruption, like here. Okay. Hard to tell, but take his word for it. Clearly, our cab will need a detour to have these floors fixed, and he's only half finished. Now we'll approve the lower part of the vehicle. So here, here, full of dirt particles. Paint's missing. Here as well. With our cab assembled and painted, it's ready to acquire more components. Simultaneously throughout the plant, those components are being assembled. Doors, windscreens, and interiors. Doors are pieced together so they can be attached to the cab in one fell swoop. Likewise, the bumpers. And the dashboard. Like the other parts, the dashboard now takes a journey of its own 
en route to meet up with our cab. Meanwhile, another rendezvous occurs. Our engine finally meets our chassis. The Actros engine is an impressive beast. With over 70 million kilometers of testing, it's one of the first in the world to meet the stringent new European emission standards. To work to the max, the muscular engine needs a lean body. The streamlined Actros cap has come a long way from the days of Daimler and Benz. The very first truck was boxy. It had a puny four horsepower engine and carried just one and a half tons. The new Actros packs 510 horsepower and carries up to 30 tons at up to 90 kilometers an hour. A sleek workhorse from the company that pioneered the streamlined truck. For decades, trucks looked like this. A long hood with the engine beneath it and the driver behind it. Lots of manufacturers still build them this way. But decades ago, Mercedes performed a radical nose job. It lopped off the hood and created the hallmark cab over engine design, allowing tighter turns on Europe's smaller roads. Mercedes soon captured nearly 50% of the market in the light duty class. This space saving innovation also reduces weight and fuel consumption. Actros was already a fuel miser to begin with. In 2008, Guinness awarded the truck a world record for fuel efficiency in its class. The key to squeezing more miles out of the engine is aerodynamics. Air needs to run like silk over the vehicle's body. Any rough edges will impede this flow, causing the vehicle to push harder. The new Actros is sleeker than ever. And pound for pound, the Actros is more fuel efficient than the typical sedan. An average car weighs about one and a half tons. This truck, about seven tons. But with a fully loaded trailer, the gross vehicle weight may reach 40 tons. Simply put, for every ton of weight, the truck uses five times less fuel than the car. So I think that demonstrates how efficient a truck can be, or actually already is nowadays. The real one-litre vehicle is the modern truck. A great statistic, but as always at this mega factory, great isn't good enough. For the new Actros, they wanted to get more mileage out of the truck itself by extending its lifespan a full 20%. In human terms, that's like adding 16 years to the life of the average German. A truck has to last at least 1 million kilometers. The engine, the cockpit. Our goal is to reach 1.2 million kilometers. Extending the life of the Actros involved a lot of testing back during the R&D phase. But testing posed its own challenge to the designers. How could they take a top secret model on the road without spilling the beans? Camouflage. Fake grills. Fake storage. Even fake angles and edges painted on by those secretive designers. It's like the stripes on a zebra that are said to confuse predators. If anyone happened to snap a photo, they wouldn't see the truck's true shape. In fact, the design has been so closely guarded, not even the company's own public relations staff were allowed to take pictures. Any one of the workers would have been well paid to reveal the secrets of the new Actros to the competition. But they all kept mum. Through the entire launch. The process. 
The process of a launch takes almost eight years. And we're a little bit proud that we maintain this secrecy with more than 11,000 people. Inside the mega factory, our cab moves to its next stop to acquire the components assembled at other stations. First, the interior. The dashboard. The installation offers yet another example of efficiency in action. We have a time span of two minutes, which means within two minutes we take up the dashboards with our appendix devices, install them in the cabs, screw them in and remove the devices. Next, our cab is outfitted with glass, which comes in its own array of styles. We have different types of windscreens, heat insulation screens, security glass and heatable screens. In a factory where robots do the mindless work, you're probably wondering what humans are doing here. Just chipping in. Production on the new Actros is so recent, the robots simply haven't arrived at this station yet. With the windscreens fully assembled, robots do the heavy lifting of attaching it to our cab. Next come the parts that count most for the driver's comfort, the seats. Now our cab's ready for the doors. Of course, on any truck, nothing matters more than safety. And the new Actros boasts an array of protection. Electronic stability control, emergency brake assistance, lane alert when the driver starts to drift, and LED lights, stronger than conventional headlights while using less power. With the outfit incomplete, our cab is at last ready to march down the aisle with the partner it can't move without, the chassis. They meet at what's called the wedding station. Just as in a wedding, it should be an eternal connection. The half assembled by men meets the half assembled by robots in perfect harmony. Till death do they part. Even here on the assembly line, as the first units of the Actros come together, the factory preserves secrecy. At the moment, the truck is still camouflaged. Nothing should be able to see it till the very end. On its journey through the mega factory, our new truck still has a few more stops to make. Like the startup station. Here they add all the fluids, from petrol to oil and turn the key. And of course, they check the work of humans and robots alike. Lights. Steering. Engine. Brakes. Last on their checklist is the roller bench test. To verify the truck's maximum speed, truck aces the test. Of course, the real world presents its own challenges, including weather. Next stop, German engineering versus Mother Nature. Here they pull a cab off the line for a good dousing. To ensure no leaks, 
they soak the truck with about a thousand litres per minute for 15 minutes. Bone dry. Now the truck is ready for its biggest test of all. After working its way through the entire plant, with 4,000 parts seamlessly coming together, our new truck is ready for its new owner. About two-thirds of the trucks are shipped to the customers. And the vert plant is ideally placed for delivery, right next door to rail and river. The Rhine is one of the most heavily trafficked waterways in the world. Barges carry the Actros to the North Sea and from there to the four corners of the globe. The rest are actually picked up by the drivers themselves, sometimes with the family in tow. While about 90% of the plant's customers are fleet companies, the rest are lone truckers, a driver who needs a vehicle as trustworthy as it is efficient. Ultimately, this is the customer the mega factory has to please. And here's where customer finally meets custom truck. Where we're standing now, and where the vehicles are picked up, we handle between 100 and 150 deliveries per day. In peak periods, that can climb to 300 deliveries. As you might guess, the vert plant doesn't just turn the customer loose to fend for himself. Driving modern trucks is very different from what most drivers learned years ago. The most important aspect to my mind, actually, is the economical use of proper handling of our trucks in terms of saving petrol and CO2. That means a full day of class. Truck driving 101. Drivers can even get a tour of the factory. Even for a seasoned driver, it's like being a kid in the proverbial candy shop. The world's biggest candy shop. When the customer sees the vehicle here for the first time, you can feel the excitement. And it's a big deal, not only for the customer, but for us. Because it's a really nice moment to get the truck right here in the plant. The trucks that roll from this plant have travelled a long road. In the decade after World War II, Mercedes launched trucks that soared in popularity and helped boost the 